Hello everyone, I'm very excited today to show you a review of one of the best shoemakers in the world, Sand Crispins, and specifically this Splito Derby in Russian Kalf. Coming up! Hello everyone, I hope you're doing great. Uh, finally we have some uh, sunlight here in Stockholm, so I can work with my light more. I hope you're all doing well and I am very excited and I'm very thrilled with all your comments and all your support so far, as you will see from today's video, uh, which has a sort of a backstory that I will be very short about. Uh, one of my viewers and readers on the blog, uh, who's a menswear and shoe enthusiast with a very sizable great collection, and he contacted me and uh, he asked me if I want to review one of some of his shoes and he offered some Gaziano Girling and San Crispins and I, I, I'm just humbled that someone would send to a stranger their own shoes that have not been worn or like they're so expensive just for me to review and put it out there for you guys. So I decided that I'll take his offer and he sent me these awesome uh, Splito Derbies by San Crispins which we'll talk about today and it's my first real hands-on, uh, you know, handling of this brand and these shoes. So it's been an awesome experience, which I want to share with you as in depth as I can. So of course, today we're going to talk about uh, the leather, the construction, the small details. And of course, I'm going to talk about uh, sizing, availability and all the good stuff we usually do here. So if you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe and let me know in the comments down below what you think. Uh, there is already a written review about this on the blog, which I will leave in the description. Uh, but let's talk a bit more about St. Crispins as a brand before we go into the in-depth review. So St. Crispins compared to some other brands does not have the name or like the history, you know, like you see in Northampton from 1900s. St. Crispins as a brand came to be around 1992 and more solid in 1995, even though they had much more experience before that. But as a name and a brand, they came to be, you know, around, around the 90s. Uh, they have a very interesting history because they're not in from your traditional, you would say, country. So these shoes are made in a workshop in Transylvania, in Romania, which is not the first one that you might think when you think about quality shoes. It's a very small workshop and they use like all the old techniques and they're almost fully handmade shoes, like actually handmade shoes. Uh, I think their headquarters right now are in Austria, but the workshop, which is quite small, it's about 25 to 30 people, I would say, uh, is still in Romania. And they make pretty expensive shoes as well, you will see. Um, definitely, you know, north of the thousand dollar barrier and it, it depends. I mean, if you go bespoke, because they do bespoke as well, it's over 4,000. Uh, they have a few ranges. Uh, one is the li more limited ready to wear collection, which you can find some retailers and of course their own shop, but they're also made to order. There is made to measure where you can make your own last and modify it slightly. And there's, of course, the bespoke department where you make everything from scratch and based off your own measurements. Uh, when it comes to, you know, ownership and everything, there is a really nice fine gentleman called Philip Carr, I hope I'm saying it right, that currently sort of runs the operation and is the owner. And he runs rounding, trunk shows and taking care of the brand. And uh, one of the family members as well now has uh, gone and made his own brand, which is called Zonky Boot. Uh, it's a very interesting history, and honestly, it, uh, it, it, it was an honor to, to try and review these, even if I like them or not, it's, it, it always fascinates me. And by the way, before we go in, St. Crispins seems to be like the saint of shoemakers, you know? So it does have a more significant um, meaning to the word. And that's about it for the basics for St. Crispins. And now what I want to do is, of course, take a closer look at the shoes. All right, everyone, let's begin by discussing the box as always. Uh, so 
the exterior of the box is very solid cardboard it's nothing as you would say you know luxuriously branded like some maybe other brands however it's it's great it does it does its job and uh before i open it up uh here on the side you can see that you know the basic stuff which is also handwritten and you know it's the last it's the leather it's the model and things like this always a great touch to see some handwriting now we got uh, inside, which is pretty awesome. Uh, let's start with the easy stuff. A really, really good shoehorn that looks like it's made out of brass. And it's like, it's very solid. It's one of the best I've seen. A little short maybe, but it works really well for, you know, normal shoes. Then we have some awesome, like really awesome shoe bags. What makes them unique is like, they have the shape of a shoe or you would say a glove. You know, not a, just a regular bag. And they're very high quality. Uh, they have this, you know, soft uh, sort of flannel suede, I would say more flannel feel to it. Also inside, uh, it's also branded here on the side. But what's more important to me is that on the inside, they have this little seam, this little folded place where you can put your shoes in but it also protects it, you know, it, it hugs it like a cup. So the back of the shoe is not exposed at any time. And during transport or when you store them, they will not green the way. That's a very good touch. And I'm surprised why not more people do it. Uh, of course, you get uh, an extra pair of uh, shoelaces, which are seem to be waxed and flat. It's always a nice touch. Uh, there is also some uh, branded shoe paper, tissue paper, sorry. And I'm not sure if anything missing because, you know, this is a bit of a, it's a, it's a used pair. What also is very interesting to me is like, you know, those little things that they put on maybe hay or some other seeds and things like this. So this little pouch here and this one, when I opened up the box, it smelled so good. It's just, the smell was delicious and it smells a bit like chamomile and it gives your shoes such a nice smell. I think this is one of the best little touches I've seen in a, like a shoe package. So you put this inside the shoes, you can put this inside the box. It's absolutely awesome. And what else can we talk about? Shoe trees. Let's talk about shoe trees quickly. They are great. Uh, these are made from maple wood and they have this sort of natural, sort of white, light brown color. Uh, they are lasted, which means that they are made specifically for your last, uh, of the last of its shoes. So it retains the shape a little more. And if you're going for such expensive shoes, I always recommend getting this. There is, it takes up to eight hours to make this and there are people dedicated to making last and shoe trees. And what I mean by hollowed is that you can see there's nothing on the back and you can see it's you can see the hollowed point here. Uh, what this does is, first of all, it's very lightweight and easy for travel. It's, it's really, it's really lightweight. And it seems that the air can also circulate a bit easier inside. Um, one great thing they do is that it actually has hinges instead of, you know, those regular one or two sort of metal bars that even Gazian Girling uses and this is definitely higher quality and it looks great in my opinion. Uh, my only grudge was that they were actually quite hard to put on and off, they're like really snug in the shoe. Uh, but uh, excellent shoe trees of course and I recommend you get them when you get such shoes. Now let's move on. Moving on, so first of all what is this? Uh, this is a Splito Derby as you can see, with five eyelets here on the top, and of course the apron here, and the split at the front, which means it doesn't have a seam at the back. Uh, actually, this model is called the 508HA. Why is it called HA? Because the apron is hand-stitched. There is also a machine-stitched uh, version. And, uh, you know, usually hand-stitch is a bit higher quality, or you would say you appreciate the craftsmanship more. Um, this one is on the classic last, which is pretty much the first last you will see on their website. And it has a rather, I would say, almond toe. It has a very balanced proportion. And overall, it works well with, the, with this model. 
Uh, it doesn't look so elongated to me, and this is a UK8. Uh, what I find interesting about this model uh, is, well, actually a lot of things. Uh, let's talk first about the aesthetics. Uh, when it comes to the apron, the split toe, I mean, everything is fine. It looks great. Uh, I'm not sure about the proportions and the spacing between the eyelets, personally. Uh, everything looks very well trimmed, especially the SPI, stitches per inches, are very good. Um, you can see the seam at the back actually on the side, only from one side. Uh, very interesting. What I immediately can tell you with, as a person with OCD that I don't really like is this part here. Uh, the three stitches that, you know, attach the leather also to the vamp and give it structure, which are contrasted and it's just three stitches here and it just it doesn't cut it for me. I don't, I don't like how it looks, uh, on this model at least. Um, when it comes to the leather, so the leather is what's called a Russian calf in a brown color and uh, you would pretty much call it this uh, hatch grain. To not overcomplicate things, I feel hatch grain is just a way more discreet uh, looking scotch grain leather. If you look very close, you can see, you know, the, the sort of grid it has, you know, uh, this grid system, this tiny little grid that goes around. Uh, but very interestingly, like many other brands, high-end brands I've seen, towards the front and maybe the edges, this actually f seems to fade away and it becomes smoother. I hope you can see this around this area. Uh, so that's about the top part, but what about the bottom? Because there is something special about uh, some Crispin shoes as well. First of all, uh, these are hand welted. So what you say in simple terms again, is the Goodyear welded method, but done by hand. Very simple term, so. Uh, the sole is, I think this one is 10 millimeters, and it's of course closed channel, so they, ca they carve a channel and they do the stitching, and you know, it's invisible here on the top. Uh, it has a, well, it had a really nice finish because you, you can see that this has been tried on. Uh, it's very clean, you cannot see pretty much the stitching anywhere around here. And I like that yeah, my friend here put, a, you know, this sort of full rubber patch, which is quite rigid and I think it will give a better grip, which is often lacking. Uh, you can see at the waist here the sizing, which says 8F and also branded St. Crispins. More interestingly, here and here is the system that St. Crispins uses is called wood pegging. If you remember my Septium Larger uh, video, uh, they also do wood pegging. Of course, this is taken to another level. And pretty much as they use either wooden or sometimes brush, um, small little pegs, like nails, you could say, and they hammer them inside and attach the sole to the rest of the uppers and the midsole, etc. Um, I think there are about 19 on each side, it's, you can only see sort of the markings, they, they, they do a very good job at, you know, hiding them or keeping them discreet, and it will not show really over, over time with wear. Uh, it's a very interesting method, I'm not sure if they do it for tradition, but it's, I've heard it's also a little cheaper to do compared to, you know, your, the, your traditional, you know, stitched ways. So when it comes to the leather itself, uh, so the leather, it doesn't feel very stiff. Actually, let me hold this pair because it doesn't have the shoe trees in. Uh, it does feel quite uh, structured overall, but San Crispin's leather is quite thin. What they do is that they take uh, crust leather, which is undyed and hasn't been processed or has any natural color. Uh, sorry, it has natural color, and you would see it like uh, white or off-white, and then St. Crispin's takes it and they will hand dye it and hand paint it to what you want. Uh, the only issue with, uh, the, you know, the thinner crust is that it will show creases usually more, uh, you know, faster, and it will also maybe seem that it will age faster, it will, will give it this antiquated look, as I will also mention later. Uh, some people like it, some people don't, um, but you can maybe see around the apron, for example, some 
some spaces or like places where there is not so much dye and uh, for me it's great because it shows that this is hand painted i love hand painted too so for me it's it's you know part of the charm and uh, the whole shoemaking trade uh, now interestingly inside also let's talk about this uh, in instead um, the sole is actually full sole uh, it goes all the way in very hard to show you it goes all the way in and uh, it's not a half shawl it's a full sole it's great uh, as well as the, the lining it is very 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 smooth and it has a, a little more texture towards uh, the back uh, you know for a bit for for grip it's very very well trimmed around the edges and uh, the stitching is is actually it's it's excellent i mean you you, you would expect it at this point i, I think um, you also you get a bit of handwriting right underneath the tongue uh, which is uh, which is great i love these little details you know oh, someone took your shoes and took the time to just write something on there that's uh, absolutely great and that's about it for the shoes as you know as just looking at them the the laces are fine the laces don't seem something you know special they, they they're fine they're functional and they're just about the, the right uh, length i would say and that's it for the close-up so let's move on and <laughs> that was it everyone i hope you really enjoyed it um i might have been blabbering a bit too much but you don't get the, this opportunity every day and there are not so many videos detailed about this um so what are my thoughts uh how about we talk about sizing first so we get that out of the point so as i said this one is on the classic last which personally i think it's there probably is a reason it's called classic it's it's just contemporary you know and i can see it fitting quite a lot of styles uh, but I would personally put this maybe on something different, like the Riva Last. Um, when it comes to sizing itself, uh, obviously I've been trying them on because um, the person that sent me the shoes, uh, we happen to have the same size, which is sort of like UK 8. And when I try them on, you know what? I would say that it is a rather true to size last and you should not size down. Especially if you have a little wider foot, absolutely don't size down. Um, this particular pair fits me very well in UK 8. Um, usually I get some pinching around the toes, you know, on the exterior part of the foot, on the forefoot. But I didn't feel that when I was wearing these. Of course, not extensively, but I did try them on. And there is just enough space at the front, I, I would say anywhere uh, between one and a half centimeter and a little more maybe, which is just enough for my foot, especially when you walk and your foot slides a bit forward. Um, also, since it's a split toe derby and ge generally a derby, uh, I found the instep rather accommodating, uh, especially on my right foot, which is a little higher. Um, did I have any other issues? I mean, everything hugged my foot just nice, uh, apart from the back, you know, like on the back of the shoe, the heel, uh, I didn't have any, you wouldn't call it heel slip, uh, but there was a little bit of space. Um, I actually welcome that uh, for my, you know, personal preference of fitting, because it, it doesn't just, you know, grind on my heel and make it uncomfortable. Uh, what did surprise me also was two things on the same topic. When I was doing my research, I looked at Permanent Style and his own review of the shoes, well, not this particular model, but Sam Crispin's, and he talked about how stiff they are. And that comes from the fact that they're using like a full leather stiffener. And uh, I, I've seen how they make it. And I mean, it, it does seem different. However, he said that some people cannot get used to this and it takes a while to break in. However, when I wore those, even for the little short amount of time that I did, they were really comfortable. I, I do suffer from a bit of a flat foot and, uh, you know, uh, a problem around my arch area and some heel pain. Maybe because of that, I found it, I found the support great. And uh, I'm not sure what he was talking about. Some people maybe will experience this, but I didn't. I found them very nice out of the box. And now in a way I can see 
what people usually on style forum and other places say that you know what would you like about this and they talk about parts you don't see it's not just about the appearance of the shoe um they talked about you know it's the nicest the best ready to wear fit i had and i'm like maybe uh, it does it does seem true to me i mean it was very comfortable out of the box uh, so far and uh, so my advice is take your regular uk size size down one full size from your us so if you're a us 90 take a uk 8 uh, if you're a uk 8 in most popular average last take that one if i size down half i would have a more painful break-in and it would be completely unnecessary it would be too tight so i do not recommend sizing down for sure um other than that availability is a bit limited compared to you know other brands but it's also a bit more exclusive san crispins makes well based on research about 1600 pairs a year that's not, that's not much allen edmonds in comparison makes up to a million so i would say that go into their you know official website find a list of retailers if you want to support those or go directly through St. Crispin's. They seem to be very nice, very helpful, and they can pretty much accommodate every request you have. Whether it's leather, whether it's modifications, whether it's just questions or about fitting or sizing, etc. Uh, so that's my recommendation, and I will leave everything in the description, of course. Um, now, what do I actually think about this pair, uh, this model, this makeup, and the shoes in general? It's very difficult for me to say, and it might come a bit controversial. Um, when, when I first saw the shoes, I was not blown away. Um, in fact, I posted the pictures in one of my Facebook groups, and someone asked me if it's Carlos Santos, which I don't know if it's a compliment to Carlos Santos or the opposite for St. Crispin's, because they looked more normal. Um, that's that's the point this particular model has some aesthetic not problems uh, has some aesthetic choices that i personally don't like and i also think that i'm a little negatively biased about this because it's not my shoe right when you pay so much and you want you want something that you create right the the, the thing you envision that it's this color it's this last it's a shape uh, it has my initials there, and it has to give you this warmer feeling. Uh, I found Sun Crispies in general to be a bit more contemporary looking, and I don't think they are the best looking when it comes to design compared to some other uh, brands that are maybe more, I don't know, fashion forward or more modern. I personally think that Gaziano Girling looks better. I, I like Antonio Macariello and Paolo Scafora much more on the basic looks compared to, let's say, this model. Um, but on the same time, I the more the more time I spent with these, uh, the more I started to appreciate them for what they are. Um, they're very well made. I mean, they're almost fully handmade. They're hand welted. They're hand lasted. They're made in a very small traditional workshop. Uh, and there is this amazing video of how they're made, which I'm going to also link to you. I really recommend finding 15 minutes to watch it. And one of the things I don't like in particular, though, is a bit the leather. I couldn't find so much information about it, and I rely mostly on research and on the helpful advice of Jesper from uh, Shoe Gazing, the blog, uh, which he told me that they take their leather from a polystannery, uh, even though the leather could be from an from Austria, I'm not sure, but the, th the crust that they use is quite thin, so it will show creasing quite more, uh, quite a bit more. And if you're uh, one of some of the people that don't like creasing, even though leather creases, like it's just normal, that's how it is, it, it might be more pronounced and I'm not sure I, I like that. But on the same time, it will develop, you know, this antiquity look a bit faster, you know. Uh, so if you like that, you will definitely appreciate it. Um, the sole is a bit bit more, I would say, controversial. Uh, it's not hand sewn, which in many ways makes no real sense or difference. 
but um, it actually, like we said, wood pegged, like here on the waist, uh, which from what I see and what I read is in a way a bit more inferior construction compared to, you know, a fully stitched sole. And, you know, if you are the kind of person that wants the super tightest waist and stitched and everything, it's uh, it's the same with Paolo Scapora. You will not be like mind blown, like saying when you see a Yohei Fukuda waist, right? Overall, this is a very solid shoe. Uh, the shoe trees are amazing. The packaging is great. Um, this particular pair costed a bit less because it was on sort of a discount. But overall, this would cost you anywhere between $1,400 and $1,600, I suppose. So now you know what ballpark it's in. Um, uh, I'm really curious to see and hear your your own thoughts. Um, it's a very well balanced shoe. Uh, it's it's a brand I definitely plan to revisit in the future. I mean, I want something of my own, right? I want to see how I feel about it. And um, but especially after wearing it, I I started to appreciate it even more and the heritage and history behind it. Um, but on first glance, this particular model aesthetically is not what I would choose. Um, I'm very curious to hear what you, you guys think, actually. And that's about it for Sam Crispin's, pretty much. I hope you <laughs> liked this prolonged video. And like I said, if you did, please leave a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel for more shoe content. We will have much more and many more brands uh, in the near future. And that's pretty much it. I want to wish you a very good week and I'm ready to engage with you in the comments even though they're bad or good. Uh, but before you go, you know what's coming. It's the bad joke of the week. Well, I had a friend that told me that he doesn't understand cloning. Well, that makes two of us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that hurts. Um, that's another great contribution from my, my friend Nedi in uh, Canada. Uh, thank you very much. And don't forget, if you have any terrible bad dad joke, please send it to me and let me know. I, I really love them. Until next time, take care and bye.